Bonjour everyone and welcome to La French Tech on Air, our European video podcast series on business and technology. My name is Adrien Baki. I'm an entrepreneur and also president of French Tech Sofia in Bulgaria. Today, I will be your host and moderator, introducing Alexandre Lenné, uh, director uh, of game design uh, of Gameloft in Bulgaria. You're, you're actually more than that. I always think you're more than that. You're, you're director of everything or nearly, yes. nearly something like that. Yes, a little bit. In f- no, not not yet. But sh- uh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm currently the game manager of our latest release. Um, the design director position right now is a bit on the on the side. You are the man doing everything. You you you're the master. The, you're the mastermind. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's I'm see the this, mastermind behind so, everything. So you don't have a career problem with Game of Hopefully people. they will I'm never see this that. Is not saying this to me, right? <laughs> so, uh, thank you again for your time uh, and interest today. Uh, very nice having you. Uh, no problem. So we've been friends for like 10 years, and I I love uh, everything about you and how you interact with the Bulgarian community. So you, Alexandre, is French. He's been in Bulgaria for 10, 12 years now. 12 years now and 12, 12 years now yes. your life with since 2010 games. basically pretty much like ne- nearly 20 years as a professional pretty much yes right. <laughs> pretty much yeah 15 uh no more like 15 but you know if you count the <laughs> time playing, playing when i was a it. kid so yeah, so yeah it's from pr- the moment you were paid well. to actually do the <laughs> games is like 15 years yeah so, yeah um yeah. We, we, yeah. I, I think what's interesting is that we're going to, to really uh, explore your relationship to Bulgaria and also your relationship as an expert in video games and we're, we're going to talk about the industry. I'm also part of the industry, so we're going to have industry talks and I'm going to, to get some secrets from you for free. Uh, so it's going to be a good, a good thing. Very professional. I mean, always, it's always a Very professional. <laughs> <laughs> so Alex, please introduce yourself. Always. Um, like, in as many words as you want. Okay, so my, my as many words as I want. My f- full name is Alexander Lenné. Uh, I'm French, born in the southeast side of France. Um, I moved to Bulgaria 12 years ago in the uh, beautiful spring of 2010 to work for uh, some big franchise back then for a big MMO project that uh, sadly didn't didn't come to life. Uh, I was supposed to stay around two years in in the country uh, maximum. And uh, after I moved to to Gameloft, uh, I kind of stayed. That was my my longest love story, in fact, because most of my companies before that, I stayed for a year, year and a half, either because I I moved on or because they just died. The video game industry is pretty savage. So um, yeah, that's what happens. And and Gameloft is a a pretty sturdy one. grows a lot and improved a lot and changed a lot in the last, uh, I think it's been nine years now that I'm here. So yeah, and uh, I I like the country. I like to stay here because it's uh, sunny, practical, um, very nice people are living here. Uh, It's it's a different, it's a different thing than France, but at the same time, it's uh, it's so close to it in a way. In what way is it close? So, um, of, uh, for people in terms that of, don't know, I mean, Im- imagine you're talking to people that have no clue where it is. So, why would it be close? <laughs> well, yeah, it was, first of all, it's not up north, like some people uh, told me in the past, like how it's going in the cold there and like next to Sweden. Uh, so, it's just above Greece and just below Romania uh, with a border to the Black Sea. And, um, it's it's not it's not a big country and it's easy to move around so that's a pretty cool thing. In terms of uh, what is close is that um, you, the culture, even though it's a bit different, it's still pretty close to what we used to. Um, we had have different uh, uh, folklore and different food, but it's not completely different. Like going to Asia and discovering completely like opposite to you, uh, in terms of. Uh, customs and everything. Uh, it's still a European country as well, so you can move in and out of it pretty easily uh, with just your French ID, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, in terms of way of life uh, and, and also the city itself, it's, you know, you have the metro, the tram, you can go around pretty easily. Uh, it doesn't feel like you're, you're, right, you're having for, to adapt to many for things. People, let's, uh, I mean, let's in general, like, when I interact with people and they say, okay, I'm French, I'm based in Bulgaria, people have the, the first ID is like, uh, Oh, but it must be very cold because you have this idea, you know, of uh, 
uh, the Red Square in Moscow with the Red Army, with the Shapka, tanks, people fighting bears and just, just trying to survive the cold by drinking vodka. And like, well, no, actually, you know, it's, it's, it looks very much like the southeastern part of France, like the Alps. So, <laughs> Except that people are indeed trying to survive winter drinking rakia instead of vodka, but that's, uh, that's the yeah, only element yeah, which yeah, we can say is part of the fantasy. Again, rakia is not vodka. <laughs> rakia is closer to the Italian grappa. You have a lot more taste. I never tried a good vodka. Yeah. Maybe maybe I should try. Yes. I, I never had one. So well, maybe rakia is a... One of the best in this country, I guess. <laughs> it, it is refreshing, <laughs> for sure. So yeah, it's it's a pretty nice place to be, and uh, <clears throat> I didn't see a reason to leave so far, uh, like to, to make me completely so move the, away the from it. So the classic question is, the, pretty how do you get there? Yeah. Because again, in the international community, you will, you, 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 if you go and work in New York, Nobody will ask you, okay, uh, wh why did you go to New York? But Sofia Bulgaria is like, Whoa, why? So why? Why now or why then? Because that's two different topics. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so why then? For me, it was really a career opportunity. I was 25 and uh, that was a collaboration with an American company. So this was really purely at the beginning professional. Uh, let's try to have a boom in my career and um, the country was also at this time just fresh out of uh, all the mafia and everything was going into um, the European Union in 2007 so it, it felt safe it felt like something that was growing uh, it was not at, in the north which was a good thing because I really like the, the sun and here we have around 220 days of sun um, the city is well connected because you could go there by plane back then you had to take some correspondence but now you can go in a direct flight at least to where I live and to Paris it's like two hours and a half so it's not like it's it's a little adventure but it's not like you know going uh, on the other side of the of the earth going to Japan or whatever um, although that could be interesting as well and so that was really professionally uh, motivated at the time uh, if you have to come now I think it's because uh, the country is booming a lot there's a lot of uh, economy growing there and uh, lots of people are exp uh, expatriating themselves there working from home or trying to create new business from there and uh, so many people digital nomads coming and, and creating business in Bulgaria is like surprising yes yeah, yeah, yeah. surprising lots of students as well yes <clears throat> It, it's 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 crazy because when I look at Vitosha, the main street where you have all the, uh, you know, the, the shops in 2015, if you go there in July and August, everyone on the seaside, everyone is in Greece, there's no one there. The restaurants are empty. And last year, if you, or even this year, if you go on Vitosha now until until midnight, yeah, 1 a.m., yeah, it's, it's full of people <laughs> walking around. The restaurants are full. You can't even get that's, a, that's a seat. Very, so, yeah, there's a lot of people coming here. It's a very live city. Lots of parks as well. That's, I mean, especially and, and for us the that have benches, been that's something that I miss a lot in France, like of, to have. Uh, of Sofia <laughs> and Bulgaria as a country, you see the difference. Like in ten years, so much happened. So it's, it's, it's it's crazy and it's, it's so nice. It's just so nice. So much happened. Yeah, 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 yeah. we went from one metro line to mm -hmm. four, <laughs> to more direct flights, cheaper flights. Uh, lots of malls opened. Lots of uh, suburbs have been even. How do you see uh, uh, the evolution of the skills and the approach to business and and in the, in the specifically in the gaming industry? The people that you were working with ten years ago, twelve years ago, and now are they the same? Are they improving? Are they getting worse? No, no, it's not. It's not even about that. Uh, <laughs> it's not about that. Um, I, I do think that, I mean, at least in mobile, in the mobile industry, when I started in 2007, we were doing games, which the iPhone was not even here. We were doing games, which were uh, 800 kilobytes. So they were very, very small, but they still had to have color. They still had to have hours of gameplay. They were sold for like three euro back then. Um, and the technicity and the team size was like 20 people to make a big game, to make a cool game, uh, including all the management and QA and everything and porting. Porting was a nightmare. You had to, to port something for like 600 devices and you didn't have an automation tool to make it. It was ridiculous. Nowadays, we can port from Apple, Android, Windows and everything very easily with all the engines. And, and it's something that has been integrated. People have to have the luxury to focus more on the on the quality of their craft and and 
things have evolved a lot. The, the, the technicity of every craft, um, be it 3D modeling, basically now in mo mobile games, you need to be able to make 3D models and textures and environments that are equivalent to a, a PS2 or PS3. Um, and that's that's something that if you were going mobile, like, oh, okay, it's a bit easier, it's a bit smaller. And no, 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 it's it's, it's the same as AAA like eight years ago. Uh, it's pretty demanding and uh, and that's pretty cool. It's, it's also why it's such a booming and growing industry because uh, you have to learn all the time. You have to progress all the time. Things you know 10 years ago, they, they don't apply anymore the same way. Um, 10 years ago, you just publish the game on the web. You get people to purchase it. They don't only they play it. Now you have to uh, find find like, make ads on different platforms to be able to get people to your game. Uh, the game is free, has monetization inside it. It should be interesting, but without being predatory. Uh, it's so much more layers. It's so much more complicated. So um, I work with people I worked with 10 years ago and their skill set has improved a lot. Uh, they, the ones that still work in the industry, they, they have learned a lot. Thank you. That sounds very positive. Uh, I, I, from my perspective, I will, sh I will share the same thing. My, okay, as an entrepreneur, I would say that the salaries have improved, have, have also increased a lot. I'm also happy to contribute, but yeah, it's. It, I, I think it has improved with the skills. But all in all, um, I find this very interesting. You know, so r right now, um, I'm in the French co tech community summit in Paris. This is where uh, we are discussing. And I see all the other French tech people. And when I say that I'm doing mm -hmm. video games, people are like, eh. It's because it's, it's in nobody's mind, you know. Uh, people want to talk about <laughs> green tech, deep tech, health tech, uh, web, web tree, all, all, all the classic stuff. But I don't even know those words. <laughs> I think that nobody's understanding that. Yeah. The, the business. So, 2007, so let's go back to history. In 2008, for the first time, the, the video game industry uh, was, got bigger than the movie industry. 70. Seven seventy-five billion dollar. Ten years after 2017, the video game industry has grown from 70 to 100 billion dollar. And in the next five years, I think that we are over 200 billion dollar, with really some massive growth in in the mobile. And people don't see it. I think people will start understanding it with a delay. And now there's all this conversation with the metaverse. The metaverse is video game, in my, op in my, in, in my opinion, the metaverse is connected directly to video games. Roblox is, is, is part of the metaverse. World of Warcraft, Fortnite, League of Legends, uh, Minecraft. This is a meta game, Pokemon Go. Um, so why, and, and I mean, Mark Zuckerberg announced in his talks about metaverse that the metaverse industry is potentially a 30 trillion dollar business, okay? Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we're talking about 2050, I don't know, but these are, these are very much connected to the video game industry. So in your opinion, why do you think that people don't understand it or don't get it? It's actually serious and big. I, th I think the players don't, understand, don't really see it as, uh, you know, oh, it's a big blockbuster movie, I have to go see it. And they don't say, oh, that's a big blockbuster Big, uh, big game that I have to play on my phone. They just play it. They just don't really. Uh, we don't market it the same way. It's not here on Times Square with big ass, you know, uh, billboards and everything. So it doesn't have the same media traction, I think. And although it's everywhere on your Facebook feed, but you know, you won't look at movies on your Facebook feed. So it's kind of different. And I think people have a history of relating to to movies and music as a different, like as the big industries of entertainment, even though everyone plays on their mobile phone nowadays, um, because it doesn't, it's not stigmatized like that. For, for the tech uh, investors and the people in the tech in general, uh, I, f I think maybe, I, I don't know, I, I'm just a, a projection here, but maybe they are, they are focused on the tech, which is not entertainment, which is, you know, useful for the future, which has a potential, uh, return on investment based on something they can understand on the real world is tangible and and maybe that's why some of them are too a lot into the the tech for ecology and for uh those things but metaverse is uh, something very difficult to to grasp if you haven't been immersed in in already uh, different worlds and different uh, um realms uh, your whole life because you have to understand that something that you can turn off potentially has monetary value and usually, reality you can't just turn it off. So if you buy a land, if you 
make a company doesn't disappear, whereas it, the metaverse... It's, it's a weird concept, it's, and, it's, and it's at a weird the same concept. time, for us that are making <laughs> video think... games and that have been in our video games all our lives, uh, the concept of giving value to pixels and to project your mind into a parallel universe is not alien. I think it's just making total sense. It's just, it's just making total sense. Yes. Yeah. Total. Especially especially when back then someone sold the pixels on a web page for advertisement and made hundreds of thousands. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it already exists. About uh, this idea about why people don't understand the video game industry and how fast it grows and all. And I was talking with a, a big uh, VC firm. We were discussing about investment and why they are investing massive amounts of money in SaaS business and nothing in video games. And the guy told me, yeah, well, you know, uh, video games uh, studios, uh, it's not reliable. You will invest in a studio and the studio will have one big hit and then maybe yeah. they never make another hit. And so we consider it's too risky. And I'm like, yeah, but you're investing in a startup you, you put one, one That's million the same everywhere. or 10 million in the startup <laughs> and you also know it's risky. So what's your problem? Why is it more risky? It's actually not more risky. And then people are like, uh, and it's just, I, I think there's still this stigma that, you know, video games is for kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's for kids and it's made by kids that are grown up it's, kids oh yeah, and I was we are actually about having as well. fun all day mm -hmm. and playing with our Game Boy. <clears throat> and, uh, no, <laughs> actually it's a job. Um, but Completely. I think it's, it's still part of the stigma. <laughs> and I see the metaverse conversation as an opportunity to you know, make, make it approachable as a conversation for everybody to, to, to remind everyone that yeah, yeah, video game is mainstream. We are all playing video games with our phones. It's, it's actually a big conversation and the metaverse is obviously super connected well they, they, yeah it's true but also the metaverse is not just video games if you follow what uh, mark zuckerberg wants the metaverse to be it's uh it's a slightly gamified experience because you have avatars and you can be having a, a very important executive meeting on the space station uh, but it's still something he wants to push for companies and to be able to have remote work and people to connect together you put your quest on the uh, on your eyes and you go in a meeting and you have like a whiteboard that everyone can share see it's like bridging the distances between people who work remote after the COVID it makes total sense and, and it has this extra layer of, of cartoony, of fun, that you can customize yourself, express yourself in a very safe environment. Um, that, I think, has a lot of applications. And, and, and then you enhance it with video games and, and other things. But uh, it's not just, you know, going to play in World of Warcraft and being a different universe. And, and that's it. Or, or buying your character in an NFT platform and, uh, yeah, and I, having it I, I, in I your metaverse gallery <laughs> on the wall. It's is really a for two uh, mix of whatever. It's a buzzword in which you put everything. It's and completely undefined, yes. Metaverse and then people tell you about NFTs and blockchain and, uh, and uh, crypto and what. It's like, okay, it's not. Exactly, exactly. And usually they don't know half of what it is, so they just uh, look yeah, at the news it's, it's, and be like, complex. oh, NFT so or scam. Is interesting. <laughs> I, I, I mean, man, I, I always so much believe uh, in what you were saying, like uh, using uh, VR or augmented reality for improving uh, business conferences and business meetings. Uh, like, like, like in Star Wars, you know, when you have an hologram and, uh, and you, you, you have or a prototyping as well, yeah. Uh, yeah. And th th that, I think, is going to really improve the work. And, and th there are so many meetings that are fucking useless. That, 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 but you can also prototype in VR. Like you can just have four engineers prototype something in VR, make a new concept car and modify the 3D model there and don't have to produce it 50 times. You can just iterate on the 3D model in your space. With, like, a bit like, you know, Tony Stark in Iron Man. It's a bit of a fantasy, but that's, I think that's what motivates some of those guys to make uh, those applications if and, we have to go and back to push this this way. Your, your presence in, in Bulgaria. Oh, can, can, can you present everyone your... Oh, what, what, how do you see the, the Bulgarian video game ecosystem? And uh, I'll give you my own perception of it, if it's different. So I don't know the exact number of how many people work in it. Uh, I know the main, the main studios that we have in Bulgaria, which are uh, the big names like Ubisoft, uh, who I think are around like 200 people. Uh, Creative Assembly, who is growing a lot and, and has gone from like 50 people to 200 and something, uh, if I if I recall the numbers, at least that's what the 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 CEO 
yeah, it's 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 owned by Sega. It's making Total War Warhammer uh, franchise, which is a, which is a pretty prominent franchise in in, in strategy games. Um, <clears throat> then we have Emimon Games, who did all the Tropico franchises, um, and they are they are a pretty pretty stable studio for the last I don't know I think it's like fifteen years or something. They they're very very strong and stable. Uh, and then we have a few other companies that are uh, kind of startups and small sometimes family businesses where there are two or three people in it uh, and then there's Gameloft which uh, went from a phase of like almost 400 people and now we're we're a bit around like 200 people in Sofia uh, so and then obviously uh, Chibi Phoenix on your side I, I don't remember how many you are but I think you you're around 100 and something on site a bit less and worldwide 200 250 if you count all the artists that are freelancing yes hmm. And that, that's that's interesting because when I came to Sofia, uh, Gameloft was around the same size, I think a bit bigger. Ubisoft was smaller. Creative Assembly was not that; it was something else. We had Black Sea Studio and other studios like that. And but I think the community kind of, I would say, doubled in terms of professionals in the last ten years. It's not a big number, but it's still I think it doubled. We have more studio that see the life. We have schools that opened, so we have more and more. Uh, professionals being poured into the industry. So that's true that, that, that um, there is this art so, academy so, where you are teaching. Yeah, that's, that's teaching all the... Uh, design. And I think that the, the community, so I agree with yes, you that the yeah, numbers yeah. kind of doubled in a few <clears> years. <throat> There's two times more. There's like Creative Assembly that I think they acquired Black Sea Studio and they transformed it. And they hired a lot of people. They are teaching a lot. Of, uh, a lot. Yeah. And I think <clears> we could also extend the video game industry community in Bulgaria to all the call centers that are actually doing customer support for League of Legends, Clash Royale, Bandai. And like, this is, this <laughs> yeah, is several thousand this. people mm -hmm. that, that are working for, for the world. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a lot of people working on it. Yeah, and those ones usually aspire to go into the industry in terms of uh, making games, not just supporting them. So sometimes they made the jump. We had a we had an ex employee like that who used to be a customer support for Supercell and then joined us and was a producer with us. So yeah, it, it's there's many ways also to enter the 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 industry if you're interested, from the Arc Academy to being a QA to being a. For 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 us, it's it's really one of uh, one one of the way of recruiting. You know, to to start with an entry level position like manual QA. Our customer support we hire from uh, the call the the call, uh, the call centers. Uh, when people are tired of doing it for another company, they do it for us. And I think you you in Gamla are doing the same. So I, I think it's a very big community. We we have we have some of the same approach. Yes, Alex. Yeah. Um, yeah, indeed. Our interview is reaching uh, its end point. We could talk for hours, but I think that today we're going to make it short. Already. Do you have uh, one last yes, thing that you I want to so. say about <laughs> video game? about Bulgaria, about video games in Bulgaria, anything? Well, I do hope that we can keep the, the industry growing there. I think the country has a lot of potential for that. And uh, I, I do hope that uh, this can become like uh, a big hub, uh, the Balkans in general, not just Bulgaria, but uh, to become a big hub for the industry. We already have some of the biggest studio in the Balkans, so it should keep growing. Thank you very much, Alex. Thank you and for, thank you everyone for, for having me and listening least, to, the, yeah. to this video podcast. So I hope you enjoyed the conversation. You can find Alexandre Lenné on LinkedIn, I guess, LinkedIn and Facebook. The session will be available on video on YouTube and on only on all the global podcast platform. And well, please follow uh, French Tech On Air on LinkedIn, on YouTube to be updated with all the activity. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.